In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the change in entropy in the system during phase transitions. Right, uh, during our work with the first law on enthalpy, we talked uh, extensively about phase transitions such as vaporization, fusion, sublimation, and the reverse, uh, condensation, deposition, and uh, freezing. And then we actually had tables with uh, enthalpies and their standard uh, conditions of one bar. And here is just uh, a, a small uh, fraction of one of those tables that shows you vaporization data for water, methanol, and argon, and you have both the enthalpy of vaporization per mole and then the boiling point. Now the question is, how do we then calculate the change in entropy when uh, the phase transition is taking place? In this video, we're going to see two different cases, one that is easy and the, the other one that is a little bit more complicated. The easy one is when you have phase transitions at equilibrium. And the other one is when you have phase transitions that are not occurring at equilibrium, of course. So uh, what's so special about phase transitions at equilibrium, or, or how do we tell them apart? Well, it's very easy to tell them apart, because phase transitions uh, at equilibrium must take place at the equilibrium temperature for the particular pressure that you're working under. Okay, so for example, if we look at this table, this table shows standard data. Okay, so that's this subscript right here, or superscript, that means that these data are only for one bar. So, right, so what that tells you is that water at one bar boils at 373 Kelvin, and that is the equilibrium phase transition. Uh, that's 100 Celsius. But for example, we actually have that there is vaporization of water that can take place at one bar a different temperature. For example, physiological temperature. If I were to put a, a, a droplet of sweat in my skin, that's we can assume that that's pure water, that uh, a droplet of water would actually evaporate, that would vaporize, okay? And uh, the temperature is obviously not 100 Celsius, so that would be a phase transition that is not occurring at the equilibrium temperature. Okay, so again, the, the way to calculate the change in entropy is different, and, and uh, it's important to be able to separate between an equilibrium phase transition and non-equilibrium. To reiterate, the equilibrium phase transitions are the ones that are occurring at these temperatures for each species at one bar of pressure. Okay, that's, that's kind of our, our working understanding here. All right, so here's an example of an equilibrium phase transition, right? Notice that this is water evaporizing uh, at one bar, and then this temperature must be the equilibrium temperature. So I go to the table and say, well, it's 373 Kelvin, the equilibrium temperature for one bar. And the answer is yes, so then that means that this is the, the easy case, right? An equilibrium phase transition. Okay, so let's work that out. Right, we take the definition of change in entropy, and we say, well, uh, notice that this phase transition is isothermal, right? So what that means is that, well, this temperature is a constant, so I can actually factor it out of the integral, and then that integral is simply uh, Q ref over T. So that is what isothermal uh, does for me, right? It makes it much simpler. Now, uh, this is an equilibrium process, okay? So what that means is that uh, it's reversible, right? Remember that the reversible processes are those that occur at equilibrium, so that's perfect, because what that means is that I can simply say that this is equal to Q sub P because it's isobaric and reversible, right, over T. But of course, if it's constant pressure, then I know that there's an equivalency between uh, the change in enthalpy and heat at constant pressure, right? So this then turns out to be very, very simple, right? Notice how the calculation of the, entropy, of the change in entropy is just the change in enthalpy for the phase transition divided over temperature. I mean, this is a very, very uh, uh, simple uh, um, you know, uh, equation that you get out of that. And again, this only happens when you're working at equilibrium. All right, great. So uh, most of the time, we're going to be working with molar quantities per mole, right? So you will have that uh, this number will be on an upper mole basis, that number will be an upper mole basis. Right, so since we have the equation right there, why don't we calculate the change in entropy for this phase transition? Much, with, much as with uh, uh, every change in entropy, it's quite simple to estimate what the sign of the delta S should be by yes, um, visually inspecting 
the process, right? Notice that here you're having water at 100 Celsius that is liquid uh, being turned into a gas at 100 Celsius that is a gas, right? Gases are far more entropic than liquid. They're much more disordered, right? There's much more mass dispersal. And what that means is that you're gaining entropy when you go from the liquid to the gas. So what, whatever you do here, your calculation should show a positive uh, change in entropy. Okay, so let's work that out then. All right, so let's calculate the change in uh, the molar change in entropy in vaporization. So the way that we write that is like this, right? So that's the molar change in entropy during vaporization. That's what this is. And that is simply going to be the change in enthalpy upon vaporization divided over the temperature. And we have uh, all that data in that table. So that is going to be 40.7, 10 to the 3 joules per mole, and then uh, the temperature, 373 Kelvin. Okay, so well, that's a straightforward uh, calculation that turns out to be plus 109 joules per mole per Kelvin. Okay, it's positive, which is exactly what you expected. All right, so this is uh, how you calculate changes in, in entropy for phase transitions at equilibrium. Again, this is the simple example. So what happens when you're trying to calculate uh, then uh, the change in entropy in a phase transition that is not occurring at equilibrium, right? So our example then would be something like this, where you say, well, uh, suppose that I want to now calculate the vaporization of water on my skin, right? What happens when you uh, sweat and then uh, uh, that water vaporizes on your skin? Well, so that would be this, this same phase transition, so that pressure is still one bar, but of course now you're doing this at physiological temperature, 310 Kelvin, and then uh, the phase transition is still isothermic, and then isothermal. Right, so the question is, how do you actually then uh, do this? Uh, well, you can't use this expression, because when we have to write this, we have to make we have made one uh, important approximation, and that, and that is that at equilibrium, you have reversibility. Okay, so that Q ref is simply the heat that you have at constant pressure, but that's just the enthalpy, right? Uh, so, so if it's not at equilibrium, then you don't have reversibility. There's no way to transform that thing into an enthalpy, right? So then how do, how do we solve that? Well, the, the way that we solve this is actually uh, through a cycle. Because notice that this, we can always calculate, right? That is uh, the equilibrium phase transition. So the idea is somehow uh, go from the initial step in this phase transition that is not at equilibrium to the final step in that phase transition that is not at equilibrium, but involving this, which we know how to calculate. We actually just did it, right? Delta S, molar vaporization for that equilibrium is this number. So we know how to calculate this path. Right, so notice that the cycle is quite simple to work, right? You can say, well, instead of going from here to the other directly to help myself out, I can devise an alternative route that involves this equilibrium phase transition, which is simply this. It just has three steps. Right, first, I'm going to heat this water from physiological temperature to 100 Celsius. Then I do my equilibrium phase transition, which gives me a trivial calculation for the change in entropy. And then I simply have to uh, connect here with products, and that will be a cooling of the gas from 100 Celsius to physiological temperature. Okay, so that's how you would do this. This will be uh, a heating of uh, the liquid, and then uh, that's just the equilibrium phase transition, equilibrium PT, and that third step, which is the one that closes it, will be a cooling of the gas. All right, now, uh, so we know how to calculate that. We've done this, right, uh, earlier in this video. And then this is just a heating cooling process that we actually have uh, learned how to do in an earlier video, right? So in these steps, we, s we know how to calculate them. We just have to add the entropy of one, two, three, and that would be exactly the change in entropy in the non equilibrium phase transition. Okay, so to, uh, uh, to get some practice on this, we're not going to solve this problem directly but you'll have problems in the homework that will test if you're understanding this. All right, so let's wrap up this video. 
We have seen how to calculate changes in phase transitions, uh, both at equilibrium, which is a fairly simple calculation, and at non-equilibrium, uh, where we have seen that using a thermodynamic cycle is going to be a very useful tool. In the next video, we're going to uh, start to learn how to think about the surroundings.